Sometimes I wonder why I did such a horrible thing. I wish I could regret what I did. I wish I could show remorse. But that's just not who I am. He's thought to have butchered at least one of his acquaintances and was found by police eating a meal that contained human liver. Cook and then eat women. The chilling crime. Torture. Apprehensible. I always knew I was different, not like the others. I knew I was a freak. But I found a place, a place for people like me, people who shared my interests, who enjoyed the same things as me people with similar tastes. He uh, would correspond with people online, tell them how he plans on doing it. Vibrant subculture on the internet of fantasy role playing. He bragged to friends th that were also in the cannibal community. And shared them with others who share the same fetishes as him on the internet. The internet provided me with a safe haven, at least temporarily. I spoke frequently with like-minded people. I suppose I can call them friends. We used to fantasize about what it would be like to bite into a woman's meaty thigh, to feel the flesh between our teeth. Cannibalism has been a problem in society for a while, we just never knew about it. He was basically writing that, I love that she is asleep right now, not having the slightest clue of what is planned. Her days are numbered, she does look tasty, doesn't she? It wasn't enough. I needed more. My first, she was beautiful, like nothing I had ever seen before, with these perfect pale thighs peeking from beneath her skirt. They looked so tasty, they were delicious. I invited her over to mine. We were sort of acquaintances, and I told her I needed help with some work project. She was very kind. It was very easy. She didn't suspect a thing. Then again, who would? Cutting up a body isn't easy, not in the beginning, not like they make out in horror films. I made friends with a big jolly man at a dinner party once. He was a butcher and taught me a lot about how to cut meat, the choice cuts. I don't know if he ever wondered why I was fascinated with his craft. <laughs> Maybe he was just happy someone understood why he enjoyed chopping up crocuses. I understood, better than he did. The torso was extremely heavy. It was difficult to fit the pieces into the suitcases, even harder to lift them down the bloody stairs. There was a moment, <laughs> the taxi driver, when he lifted the bags, he asked me, what you have in there, a dead body? To which I just smiled and said, how did you know? We both laughed, it was funny. I don't think he got the joke. He dropped me at the bus station I said I was visiting family. It was very easy. He wished me the best. I spent the next few hours wandering the streets, choosing carefully different bins and places to dispose of my scraps. I had the best parts waiting in the fridge for later. I can't remember every place. Burgate, the river, West Station Road, a nice little ravine area at the university. I think I went as far as Wincheap. It was exhausting. I was very tired. The third time, it was a homeless lady. It was more or less the same, although nothing beats your first, you know. I think they found her hand first. It was then I saw a box covered in plastic bags. I tried to move it and saw some hands sticking out. Apparently that was quite suspicious. Police here have not ruled out the possibility of more arrests. This was a very difficult investigation. Charged in a bizarre plot that involved cannibalism. When they arrested me, it was almost a relief. I could finally talk to people about it. I was interrogated by three psychiatrists. 
They concluded I was mentally insane and sent me to a criminal psychiatric ward. Remain in custody until psychological tests determine whether he can stand trial. Sometimes I wonder why I did such a horrible thing. I wish I could regret what I did. I wish I could show remorse. But that's just not who I am.